Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Brad, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Duel Links video. Today with another Duel Links League video for you guys, covering some of the new character skills added and now uh, seeable in the most recent update to the game, the update that allowed you to see your opponent's region and to prepare for the KC Cup and the Crowler event. We have some skills for Velian Crowler, for uh, Zane Truesdale, Jesse Anderson, uh, Bones, Chaz and Jaden I believe. There's also some for Mai as well that have been in the game that we haven't been able to actually use that are really interesting. So let's start with, I apologize for this, that really wasn't meant to happen, uh, I, with a zombie draw. This is a bone skill probably, uh, can be used each time your life points decrease by 1800 during your normal draw phase. Draw a zombie type monster instead of a normal draw. That's pretty cool, um, can really save you if you're, you know, if, if you have one of those hands where you just open up on a ton of back row and you really need a monster, this is going to be very very useful indeed. Not too sure how much play it will see because these are, these draw one monster type things are really only used for farming decks I've seen. So uh, maybe there will be a cool zombie farming deck in the future which would be uh, really really cool to see. Next we have Posthumous Army, can be used each time your life points decrease by 2k. The monster in both players graveyards become zombie types so it's kind of like if she's used no mortal can resist, you know, but that puts um, Skull Servants in their graveyard, whereas this one just turns them all into zombie monsters, which again sets you up for some uh, Red Eyes Zombie Dragon plays, and um, there's probably some other cards that aren't in the game yet that really work with zombie monsters in your opponent's graveyard, so that's going to be pretty cool. Also kind of then alleviates monster effects to target monsters in your opponent's graveyard, so um, if your opponent had, let's say, a card that's for some to drag it from the graveyard, you'd be able to pretty much negate it with this. So that's pretty cool. Next, Dawn of the Brains begin the duel with the field spell Zombie World activated. That's a good skill. I think that's one that a lot of people do want because Zombie World was a card we really wanted from the Bones event and we didn't get it, so it'd be nice if we can actually get it uh, via a drop skill whenever Bones actually gets added to the game. Next, Level Change, which is probably going to be a Chaz skill, you'd have thought. He's the only one that uses level monsters. Send one level monster from your hand to your deck. Choose a level monster with the same name but different level from your deck and add it to your hand. This effect can be used twice per duel. This skill can only be used once per turn and twice per duel. So, basically, if you draw into a uh, level 6, but you really need that level 4 to start off the chain, you can do that. If you've got a level up and you really wanted a level 8, but you only have a level 6, then you, know, you can just reset things out. Basically, makes level decks a little bit more consistent. I think this one will be will see quite a bit of use, um, depending on how well like Horus and Silent Magician stay in the meta. And obviously, if we get Arm Dragon level 10, then that's going to be really, really cool, a really good benefit for those decks. Worst of the worst, if your deck has five or more level two monsters with different names, three level two monsters are added to your starting hand. So this is obviously in here for Ojamas. Uh, getting three Ojamas to your hand immediately sets you up for summoning Ojama King or Ojama Knight pretty much, um, and then if you get into blue then you can obviously use this effect to add two from your deck to your hand, so really really cool uh, skill at least, um, that's going to guarantee you start off with a good defensive and of course you combine that with painful decision, you're going to be able to drop one to the grave, get one to your hand, really really cool. Next, Middle Age Mechs, begin duel with a continuous spell blank activated, so I'm not too sure what continuous spell Kralis has, I believe Ancient Gear Castle was a field spell. But it's probably, an, it's definitely going to be an Ancient Gear uh, continuous spell. I'm just blanking on it. Like, is Ancient Gear Cannon one of those? I'm really blanking on what was in the uh, the original uh, machine structure deck that came out that had all the Ancient Gear support in it. So uh, apologies for that, but depending on what that spell card is, could be pretty cool. It's kind of similar to Alexis's uh, skills that puts those uh, ritual spells on the field. So pretty cool. Teacher Relief Discipline. Can be used each time your, monster, your life wants to decrease by 1500. Declare a monster spell or trap card. That type of card will be randomly selected from your opponent's deck and placed on the top of their deck. Neither player will see what the card is. Nothing will be placed on top of the opponent's deck if the declare type is not in their deck. So, if you know what your opponent is playing very early on, you can decide their next draw. So, let's say um, you wipe out all your opponent's life points, or you're about to, you know, go for game, and um, the only thing that can save them is by drawing a monster. You can use this to put a spell card on there. And if you know they're running something like uh, Phoenix, then you might, you know, it'll either be something like a Super Rush Headlong, or it will be a uh, one of the Viking Field spells, 
or cards from beyond, something like that. So really screw over your opponent's game, basically. Um, and obviously, if you know the cards in their deck, you know it's in the graveyard, you can work out what will be the most optimal play for you uh, for your next turn. Heroes Never Lose, a Jaden skill, can be used by discarding one card each time your life points decrease by 2,000. Play one level 7 or higher warrior type monster that can be small summoned from your hand. So, this, I believe, will get you Blade Edge. I think that's a 2 tribute. This will also get you Elemental Hero Neos, so it's a very easy way of summoning Neos without, um, I guess it's taken as a special summon, or it's just, you know, it's just play, so it can't be negated, which is pretty cool. Getting Neos out on the field for free sets you up for a uh, contact fusion with things like Flare Scarab, uh, a Hummingbird when that gets added, Grand Mole if we ever get that card. Um, really cool skill, I think this will see a little bit of use. Um, pretty cool. Hero Emergency can be used if your life points are at 2000 or below and you draw a hero on your spatial monster. You can immediately play that card. So, this one I think might be a bit better. Um, because you get a free summon, basically, regardless of what the hero is. So, if you really needed um, something out, then you could do that. If you already had your Neos on the field, you could summon out your Neospatian, or you could summon another, another, uh, another monster, basically. So, pretty cool. I quite like that skill, Hero Emergency, you really want to see that come into game. That'll make me play Jaden a bit more, when we do get more Neospatians and Heroes. So, uh, Konami, get on that. Double Normal Summon, I believe this is a Jaden skill. This wasn't really uh, too easy to find out. Um, can be used each time your life points decrease by 1500. You can Normal Summon. You can summon one normal monster in addition to your normal summon or set. This skill can only be used once per turn, so it's basically double normal summon, the, the spell card, but in a skill form, which is pretty cool. So you'd use it for Gemini's. Um, really, really cool. Next. This is the skill which I was most excited about when reading this. Meet my family, the start of a duel. The following cards are added to your deck and shuffled. Rainbow Dragon, Sapphire Pegasus, Topaz Tiger, Ruby Carbuncle, Cobalt Eagle, Emerald Tortoise, Abba Mammoth, and Amethyst Cat. You are considered the original owner of these cards. So, to me, this is anyone can play Crystal Beasts without having to run a Crystal Beast deck, but it also guarantees you can have more than one copy. But it means your deck is now starting with 28 cards compared to 20, so it's a bit of a negative. I think it depends on how well you can uh, get this deck to run, which is not too great. I mean, we, we are going to get Jesse as a character, this is a Jesse skill, but um, I'm just wondering how the school will be useful, because right now I don't see it. Because you're just going to get a ton of dead draws. I mean, if you draw a Sapphire Pegasus or Topaz Tiger, then you're kind of fine because those are very good beaters. But anything else is kind of a dead draw immediately. I mean, Tortoise can go into defense mode, so... Plus, you only have three spell and trap card zones, so once these guys get destroyed, they're going to clog up your field very, very quickly. Next, Crystal Power. This turn, the attack of all face and monsters on your side of the field increases by the number of continuous spells times 200. So again, you can use this without Crystal Beasts, but this is really good with Crystal Beasts. Each monster could potentially get 600 attack points if you have the maximum amount of continuous spells or maximum amount of crystal beasts in your spell and trap card zone, which is really, really cool. Uh, it's a, uh, it is better than a uh, Yugi's ties the bind skill, um, but obviously does require the uh, you basically require to run crystal beasts pretty much because there's not that many continuous spells in the game that you really want to be using other than like shard of greed. Even then, you don't really want to be using that. Next skill, Harpy's Last Will. Six Harpy cards in your graveyard are banished and one Harpy's Feather Dust is added to your hand outside of your deck. I don't know if this is in the game just yet. I kind of think it is, but if it is, then apologies for this. Um, pretty cool. You know, it's an easy way of getting um, banned cards into the game by adding them as skills that require such uh, higher costs. And Harpy's Feather Dust is one of those cards that is a very, very powerful card. And by banishing six Harby cards in your graveyard, and that's just at random, I think, so... Pretty cool. I don't see it seeing much use because Harpies haven't seen much use at all recently. Until we get more support for Harpies, this skill, when it ever does come in, won't really be used. Uh, Bewitching Dance, this is a new skill. At the end of the damage step in which a Harpy or Amazonist monster attacked, the bound position of the defense position monster it attacks changes to face-up attack position. So, this immediately allows you to get over with a second attack. Pretty cool. 
Allured by Darkness can be used each time your life points decrease by 1800. Instead of doing a normal draw, Allure of Darkness is added from your hand to, out to your hand from outside your deck. I think this is either a Bones or Zane drop skill, or yeah, one of those skills. I uh, wasn't too sure because Allure of Darkness is a very generic card. It could be a Ubel skill actually, thinking about it now, because Ubel is in the game. So, could be one of her skills, which is pretty cool. Allure of Darkness is a pretty powerful card. You do want to be running more than one of them in your deck though, so... This will get two of them, at least per duel, so pretty cool. Now onto the Zane skills. Cyber Style can be used after your life points are at 3,000 or below, so once you take 1,000 points of damage. Play one Proto Cyber Dragon on from outside of your deck for every 1,000 life points below 4,000. So if you're on 1,000, that's three Cyber Dragons on your field. It immediately sets up plays for Cyber End Dragon or for going into things like Chimera Tech, Over Dragon, things like that. Really cool card. Love is Pain, I believe this is another Zane skill. If you receive damage from your opponent's card effect when your life points are 2,000 or below, your opponent will receive the same amount of damage. So it's kind of like a Relinquished for as a skill. And it's just generic for whenever. So this kind of counters um, burn decks like a lot because uh, if your opponent is playing, like say your opponent is Weevil and they've got Mask of uh, Restrict on there and they've got um, burning land, then you know they're going to be taking a thousand points of damage every time you take your thousand, so that's pretty cool. And they'll probably die because of it because it have started on their turn. Next, no excuses can be used for your life points drop below 500. Instead of doing a normal draw, power bond is added from your hand from outside of your deck. This card is a ridiculous card, basically, lets you fusion summon a cyber or machine type monster, sorry, and it doubles its attack points, but you then take the damage equal to its attack points at the end of the turn. And I believe the monster's destroyed as well, not too sure. This is definitely a this is the last move I can make type move. And putting out a power bond in a duel is going to be really, really cool to see, especially in ranked. Cannot wait for Zane to be added so we can get some of these skills. Fatal 5, if the monster attacks 5 times during one turn, you win the duel. Um, not many cards can do this. Again, this is probably going to be a Zane skill because of Chimera Tech Overdragon, which can attack the same amount of times as Fusion Materials, I believe it is. So. But anyway, if you were playing that anyway, then uh, you probably would win. Um, assuming your opponent didn't like Mirror Force, Mirror Wall, you sorry, or uh, use Bacon Saber a bunch of times or whatever. So pretty cool skill. And I believe that is actually it for all of the skills we have in the game right now. Let me just do a quick check. I'm going through that Zane is definitely the last letter of the alphabet. So that is it for today's Duel Links video. Hope you guys did enjoy this look at some of these brand new skills. Again, big thanks to XLF slash Exelos for providing uh, the access to these skills. I'll link to the image gallery in the description down below where you can see every single character skill in the game. These are just the ones that were brand new. And uh, let me know your thoughts on these skills. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next Duel Links video. See you then.